Hey, you. Over here, agent. Slayer. Yo, what's up? Hey, over here. Cursed one. Hello and welcome to Control Alt Wow, the podcast for those of us who love love making many alts, love working video games, <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> Just love it. Uh, I love virtual reality. That's a big part of uh, what we are here for today. And I am April PVD. And this is episode 803, The Ring Chaser Saga. As you know, I used to be a World of Warcraft podcast, but because of my recent love, well, it wasn't recent, in my gradual sinking into virtual reality, I have become a more virtual reality or a virtual reality oriented podcast and today we are coming to you with episode 803 and we're going to be talking about a lot of different things. I like to start off with uh, what's been going on in my week. I've had a really good week. I have been fascinated with Insta360 flow 360 degree pictures. So, uh, Maja and I have been going out on long walks so we could take, and at the end, the, when we get to a place we like, we take our Insta 360 photos. I am healing from my fall uh, in last uh, month. In fact, it was uh, tomorrow, we'll make it a month. I tripped and fell, hit my knee, hit my arm, and I'm healing from that. And uh, I'm doing much better. It was very traumatic. I am still sober. As of March 14th, I stopped drinking and it's been wonderful. I do have another podcast, another uh, YouTube channel where I talk about my single sober and small life because I'm on a very tight budget. So, well, let's get started with this episode of Control Alt Wow. And today we're going to talk start with talking about the difference between PC VR and a standalone quest. Now, what I'm going to try to do is tell you a few things about how I play VR. It's interesting because a lot of people in the beginning, we had to have a computer. You had to have a computer attached to your your uh, your headset. And then about three years ago, Quest came out with the Quest 1, or the Quest. And now they have the Quest 2. And so when you play with the Quest 2, you can play with just the standalone headset. Uh, I put a screenshot in the show notes because I wanted to show you, first of all, my home base. And that's where I've been taking my Insta360. That's why I've been taking the Insta360 flow 360 degree photos, because I want this uh, video, this this picture around my home, my home base, or as it's called, the skybox. And uh, you can see the pictures in the in the show notes of my skybox. And once you're in that spot, you're then presented. You have the option to open up your menu, and that's where you choose your applications. It's very much like your desktop, and uh, it makes it feel like you are. Uh, in a 3D space, but you have the screen. Now, there's been a lot of changes with this software. One of the changes is that you can now uh, use your hands instead of your controller, but I haven't gotten that uh, advanced yet, and I'm still using my controllers. But when I start up for a, a standalone, when the menu comes up, I click on the application and I just start the program. 
Now, the difference between playing in PC VR versus standalone, or I should say standalone versus PC VR, is that you're still the same person. You're still, I mean, you're still wearing your headset. You still have a headset on, but you're just playing with everything that comes with the Quest 2. If you want to see more about what and how I do it, you can go to the um, my YouTube channel for Control All Wild or for April PVD, and I have a playlist on there of the videos that are associated with this episode. When I do open up the menu and activate a program, and for an example, if you Go to the YouTube channel, April PVD, and look up Control Alt Wild 803. You will see me playing on my uh, standalone. I'll put a screenshot in the show notes, and then we will also put a screenshot of me playing with the uh, PC VR, and you'll see the difference. The biggest difference is the graphics are better because the computer, when you're doing PC VR, is doing all the heavy lifting. Whereas the Quest headset has a few limitations, and one of the things that does happen is that it uh, has to free memory very frequently. They have made uh, several changes in recent uh, updates where the freeing up doesn't show as frequently as it used to, but you will still get that freeing memory um, alert and it will you know, take you out of the game for just a second. But that's because the headset is doing all the heavy lifting, whereas on the PC VR, the computer is doing the heavy lifting. Now, when you go into doing PC VR, for me, and there are several ways of doing it, I use virtual desktop. So what I do is one of the icons, along with the standalone games, is virtual desktop. And when I open this and I put some screenshots in the show notes, I'm actually presented with a physical, I, a virtual representation of my desktop. <laughs> and the desktop of the PC that I am using on my virtual desktop. It's linked to my computer. It's linked to the, the Quest 2 by something called a desktop streamer. So you log into your desktop streamer and then you you will then have the you will have your virtual desktop options. From that window you can do settings, you can choose your games. There, for me, I have two rows, two sets of games. I have my original Rift games, and then I, I and all the games that are cross by on the Quest Two. I have an option to use those. For instance, Population One, I can play my Population One on my headset, or I can play it on my on my Oculus Rift. And then I also have Steam games. Now, the Steam games are very, there's more of a variety, and that's the advantage to PC VR, is that there's more, there are more games on Steam, there's more of a variety, there are more options to choose from, and because the games on Steam are more intensive, more graphic intensive. Now, you cannot just use any PC. You need a, get a PC that's capable of running virtual reality. And if you're thinking about doing PC VR, Steam does have a, a program for testing your computer. And I recommend that if you be, you know, when you think you want to try VR or PC VR and you have a computer, Go ahead and try that. If you're planning on buying a computer, there are many resources on the internet where you can find people who will tell you whether or not your game will run on Steam. Will run on PC. Well, whether your computer will run on Steam 
are on P do PC VR, do virtual reality. It's a very graphical intensive. I can tell you that I have one of the low-end graphics card. Uh, mine is an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660 Ti, and that is like one of the minimums <laughs> for running uh, PC VR. And originally, I had 8 gigabytes of RAM, and that was not enough. I, re I upgraded in the last year to 32 gigabytes, and that made all the difference. I could not run Zenith on um, this PC before I updated it to 32 gigabytes of RAM. So you want to make sure you have that. And you're also going to need a really big hard drive. I have a 250 gig hard drive, and that's not enough. I have to I have to get two external hard drives and what I have been doing is putting my most graphic intensive games on the internal hard drive and then uh, putting the um, less intensive games on the external hard drives and that really makes a difference what I would really like on my next computer would be a um an SSD drive, but yeah, hopefully that'll happen one of these days. <laughs> so that's the difference between a standalone and PC VR. PC VR is more graphic intensive, more I have a game that cannot be played on the Quest only on, I have several games. My biggest one that I like to play is called Derail Valley and it's where you actually operate a train in VR and you can only play that with a PC VR. There are plenty of games you can play standalone and as you'll be able to see in the show notes there is a graphical difference, a big difference between the standalone and the uh, PC VR. And that brings me to what I've been doing this week. <laughs> Each expansion or patch up or update that uh, I've been playing Zenith, a lot of Zenith. And for the last three or four months, they have been just throwing updates at us, and it's been great. The update that the last update added what is called a fourth pylon. So you're in Skyland. You're in this huge place that's the new expansion. It's when, when they brought out the Cyber Ninja, they created this new expansion. And you are... They have created these missions that you have to complete, these goals. It's your usual MMORPG grind or you know your goal and each time you complete a pylon you get a little bit more powerful you also get uh, access to new uh, gear blueprints and you have more goals and more things that you need to get and the the end goal for all these pylons and the gear that you're getting is to be able to upgrade your the gear that you have for tackling bosses and things like that in uh, for upper level people. Now, I'm not raiding. If you're uh, one of the things that you can get is that you're when you're raiding is radiant crests. <laughs> And I'm hoping I'm making sense. I'm trying to make this broad enough so that you can understand, so that everybody can understand it and also make it uh, interesting for the people who are actually playing Zenith. And if you're playing Zenith, let me know because I would love to, to play with you. Uh, it's such a wonderful community and it is a lot of fun. I am always, as always, a noober in that I... <laughs> Know a lot, can do a lot, but I'm still, you know, not up there as far as uh, the big guys. It's like I haven't done any raiding yet, but these this 
equipment that I'm doing, the things that I'm doing are going to help me and enable me to raise. So I'm very excited about this. But the big thing that came out was Skyland. And in Skyland, had uh, you, you had your lake pylon that you had to complete. Then you had the forest pylon, lake, no, lake, mountain, and then ravine. And then in the last month, they came out with the Sky Ruin Pylon. This was the most challenging and, for me, the scariest because not only did you have to go, did you have to collect the mats, go through all the different quests, uh, fight a certain um, uh, mobs, but you had... Something new, they brought in a escort quest where you had to escort this truck. And uh, that was interesting because it brought me back to my World of Warcraft days. I mean, who doesn't love a good escort quest? And then it had this thing called the Ring Chaser. Now, before we get into that, I do want to introduce you to my tunes. Now, I, of course, this is Control Alt Wow. So, of course, I have multiple tunes that I am running. My first tune is a Cyber Ninja. Her name is April. April PVD. All my tunes are named April PVD. I did that because I felt like that would make things easier. <laughs> Maybe it's silly. But uh, my first one is she's a ninja. And her, uh, she's April PVD, close, right bracket, because I thought it looked like the uh, arrow that she uses. And the arrow can also be split in two and become a comma. And uh, she carries two arrows. My second tune, which is also my main tune, is April PVD Asterisk. And she's my blade master. And she uses a blade to, uh, she uses two blades. <laughs> she's very powerful. I used to play her almost exclusively, especially before I wasn't as active as I am in the mornings now. And I needed to get my uh, steps in with my fit bitch. The, the action of doing the blades was very helpful for that. And my third uh, alt is my essence mage, and she's April PVD forward slash because she shoots lasers out of her launcher. And, uh, yeah, she's, she's pretty bad, too. They all have different things. Uh, the ninja and the uh, Essence Mage are a long distance one and a my Blade Master is a melee, so she's more up close. But they both work really well. They both are uh, uh, lots of fun to play. And again, you can see more of their playing in uh, the video on YouTube for Control Alt Wow episode 803. But now we're going to talk about the biggest challenge I've had in the last couple of weeks, which was doing the Ring Chaser quest. The thing about this particular quest was that you had to use the uh, grapple hook and the wind turbines to go up through these hoops get up to the this island that was way up in the sky and this island was that so high but it wasn't so much how high the island was it was getting up there and half the time when i was floating out over the uh with the grappling hook you use the grappling hook you pressed it it would go up and uh magnetically attached to the anchors and then you press your up button and it would suck you up to get up to the top and then you had to glide on the turbines now the thing was when you 
were sucked out over. You were pulled up in such a way that it made it seem like you were floating over air. It was so bad that it made my stomach freeze. It made my legs freeze. And it... Um, it was driving me crazy because I couldn't do it. And I needed to do these, these this quest in order to go forward in the game. There were things I, I had to do to get my next level of gear, to get the next level of quest. <laughs> there were just, well, if you could not do this, this quest, you were just stuck. So <laughs> the first time I attempted to go up in this, uh, these, this, the ring chaser, it's called. The first time I attempted to go up, I actually made it up there on my essence maid. My, I'm sorry, on my cyber ninja. So I actually m made it up there, and I knew that I had to. There was an event you have to start, and the event involves killing this tech birds, tech breads. I always call them tech birds, but they're actually brids. And getting the balls that they drop and then taking them up two more levels and dropping them in this machine. I grabbed what I thought was six of them. I went up to the top level, and I had nothing, nothing in my inventory. I looked in my inventory. I looked all over. And it wasn't until later that I found out that the problem was that I needed to carry them one at a time <laughs> while I'm using the grappling hook and using the uh, turbines. I had to hold on to one. I couldn't do it. I almost stopped right then and there. I was actually going to think about going back and starting a new character and just, like, not doing this. This was just too much for me. And uh, I went back to playing, doing other things on my characters, and just, I was stuck because I could not open Sky Ruin without doing this quest. My, <laughs> I ended up finding out from other people, oh, you have to carry those balls up. You have to carry them up six times. So I was planning on just uh, grinding for mats until I figured out how to do this. Somebody else thought that I was going, I, I mentioned that I don't know how I'm going to do it. Maybe I'm going to have to somehow figure out another way. Well, I did figure out a way, and I'm going to tell you now, but I had told someone that I thought of it as cheating, and they thought I meant letting someone else log in on my tune and then do it, but I wasn't going to do that. But this is what I ended up doing. I was out grinding and doing the uh, escort quest with the truck, and this gentleman named Zealots joined in and started helping me, and I said, oh, what a nice, what a nice guy. I said, you want to really be nice? Can you help me do this quest? The, the ring chaser. And once I explained to him what I needed, he came up to the, with me, and, and I have to admit, I did kind of uh, not, I was not 100% honest with him. We went up together, and he was the one that explained that you had to carry the ball in your hand. Now, if you've done Outlaw Grove, it's the same way you have to carry the bombs in your hand. You can't put them in your inventory or the uh, little cores for the to operate the turbines. You can't put them in your inventory. You have to carry them in your hand. So I went up to the top, and when he said, okay, now you have to go back and get another one after he had put one in. So you, you carry them up, and you put them in the machine once the event is activated. And... I actually hid behind this arch that's up there. And when he came up again, he go, I said, oh, no, I dropped my ball. I don't know how that happened. And 
he ended up putting all six in for me. So I got it done on my Cyber Ninja, which meant that now I could do the other quest, and that was wonderful. I've even found out um, ways of doing, you know, you had to activate the Sky Ruin pylon. And in order to do that, you had to grind all these Sky Stones and shout out to UZA for organizing Sky Stone uh, events. In fact, I want to do a shout, a special shout out to Z because one Sunday Z did it for, <laughs> we, they usually do the event from, uh, I think it was like, oh no, it was a Friday. So it was like from six until 7.30 and Z just kept on going. And I think I must've got two or 300 Sky Stars because he just kept going and I ended up uh, just staying there for like three and a half hours, which I want to give a, a shout out because I talked last episode about my Bobo uh, M, uh, VR M2 headset. And that is like changing the way I play now because I can continue to play just by swapping out batteries. So, okay, so now I have the Ring Chaser quest on my cyber ninja and she's able to do a lot of the quests although one of the quests <laughs> involves climbing back up to that same first island and hitting uh mining an esotech ore from that uh that pylon that's up there and at first i just skipped doing that and Eventually, I just kind of forced myself to go up because here's a, a hint. If you're doing the quest where you have to get the Esotech ore, and I think that's called Tech Bread Corruption, and then there's another quest where you have to kill a, um, a baneful assemblage, at the end of the tech bread, tech bread corruption, you have to kill an, a uh, baneful assemblage. And if you do those two quests, you can. If you do the one where you have to go up to the level of the ring chaser to uh, the rings to get that, uh, to get that ore, and then go down and, and complete that quest, you are doing two quests at the same time. You don't have to go out and get the baneful assemblage you can just kill that one so I kind of started making myself do that and it was very hard to do because my stomach was in my chest but I ended up doing it and then uh, I ran into Gandalf the Great one day and he was he was offering to help someone New, he thought was new, and he thought they were they were low level. And he was going to show them where all the new tiers were, and I said, "Oh, Gandalf, you really are friendly." And he says, "Well, I like to help people." And I was like, "Oh, well, do you want to help me? Because I need to get the Ring Chaser quest done." And he said, "Yes," and I was over the moon. <laughs> it was. Uh, the best part was I had gotten my essence mage up to that up to that level, but I left her there and I just uh worked with my other tunes. I didn't even do another tune because I was so <laughs> I didn't I didn't even do anything else with the essence mage because I had gotten her up there and I wasn't gonna get her take her down again. So I met Gandalf up there and he understood that I couldn't do the balls. He did the balls for me. And I <laughs> I feel like a fraud. <laughs> Maybe, you know what? Maybe I'll get better at it and I'll help someone else do it. But then I started uh, grinding for the pylon with my Essence Mage and finally uh, I got it done on my Blade Master, which was kind of sad because my Blade Master was my uh, my main character, my first character, the level forty, and she couldn't uh, get her the gear she needed to get better. So when uh, I ran into, I had mentioned it to 
No Epic Fail. And he volunteered to help me, and so I managed to get it. But what was really interesting was that after I got uh, my Blade Master up there, I started doing that other quest, and I, I'm, I'm much better at doing it. I, I can get up to that, that level now. I can ride those pylons. I wish... If you could be in there and see it, I can ride the um, the wind uh, the wind thing turbines. I can do my uh, grapple hook and hit those anchors, and I'm getting so much better at it so that I don't feel like uh, such a fraud. <laughs> now I just gotta get um, get my tunes into rating. And then I'll be uh, even better. Now, here's the other thing that's going on this week in uh, in uh, Zenith. That's very exciting, and that is that the uh, the beta is open, and if you change your uh, the version of your game to beta you can go into the one the skyland area that's been closed and you can go to the citadel and fight the new boss and it is it's really exciting i did that uh friday shout out to z from uza uh for uh organizing that event it was fun going in there and seeing some of the new content. I don't like to see a lot of the new content because I don't want to be spoiled. But that was fun doing that. And, uh, yeah, so now I have the Ring Chaser quest under my belt. And I feel so much better. I feel less like a fraud. And the other thing that uh, <laughs> it was really, really great to be able to finally do that and not be a chicken. So the other thing that I have been doing outside of Zenith, I've been doing a lot of Zenith thanks to the Bobo VR backup battery. <laughs> but the other thing that I have been doing outside of Zenith is I've been exercising and uh, I do a lot on Hollow Fit. I think I talked about Hollow Fit before and uh, how much the uh, elliptical has worked for me and what it's been like uh, to use the elliptical, how it's synced to my headset and when I'm on the elliptical. But today I actually, I mean, uh, recently I've actually been doing something else, which is Fit XR. I may have mentioned it last week, but uh, the what I have been doing now is when I before I go into... Hollow Fit, I like to warm up doing the warm ups in Fit XR. And that's, it's really neat. You have a coach in front of you. They kind of walk you through all the motions and some of the, just, I'm working up a sweat and I'm getting a good exercise. And then, of course, I'm going into my um, Hollow Fit. And for the first time in Hollow Fit, I completed one of the monthly challenges. It was very hard. The last piece of the challenge was to find this particular trophy on the uh, this thing called Sabion, and it's a run through the desert, through an oasis, through the Sphinx. Sphinx. Uh, it's it's, some of it's at night with the full moon. It was very beautiful, but uh, when I first went through, I went. It's a it's it's supposed to almost emulate a marathon, and it takes it's over an hour to get through this thing. Actually, I think it's over an hour and a half because I did one. When you go through, you can choose a path, and I chose the right path. I always choose the right path when I go in, so I can remember, but I did find out that if you... I, I do the right path so I can remember which one I've done and then do the left one, but then I figured out the uh, a 
last week or the week before that the path that you've already run is outlined in green. So you know that you've already gone through that particular path. It turned out that the trophy was on the left side. And so I had already gone for an hour. And I said, you know what? I'll try again tomorrow. And I went in and I did, uh, I went through and I did a half an hour and I stepped back to get uh, to deal with something and I ended up getting kicked out of the race. So I had to go in again and uh, do it another 45 minutes. But it was good exercise and I found the trophy and I completed the challenge and I um, I really like Hollow Fit, and I'm having a wonderful weekend in VR, a wonderful week in VR, and I'm enjoying my all the little things I'm doing. <laughs> they may seem silly, but they're a lot of fun. And if you haven't tried VR, I would hope that one day you will let me know, and we could try it together. It can be a wonderful experience. It has made my life much better. I've been able to stay sober because I found things that I like to do. I'm getting exercise. I'm having fun in uh, gaming in a way that I couldn't do with flat screen games. And uh, yeah, and, and, it, and it saves me money because there are a lot of free VR games out there. There are a lot of games that uh, don't have a, uh, any kind of, of subscription. I mean, I was play, paying $15 a month for three different characters in World of Warcraft. And with uh, Zenith, I'm not paying anything, and I'm, pay, I'm playing more than three characters. So, Oh, and the other thing I did, well, I'll talk about that next week. So thank you for joining me on Control Alt Wow. I hope you enjoy my virtual reality. And uh, I will join you. I hope you join me next time in my reality. Thanks. You can contact me at controlaltwow at gmail.com. You can find the video portion of this on YouTube at youtube.com slash aprilpvd. And you can find the show notes for this episode with all the pictures of the things I talked about at controlaltwow.com, which forwards to controlaltwow.blogspot.com. This has been April PVD. Till next time, agents. See ya. Later. You headed out? Come back again soon. Don't be a stranger, dear. Visit again soon. The Dunesbury All.